Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts. I am joined again by Scarhoof. Hello, everyone. And uh, today we're going over Friday Facts 210, a circuit connector module implementation. There's a lot of uh, a lot of pretty graphics in this one. Yes, yes, so, pretty pretty pictures. Oh yeah. So uh, this is uh, written by V, and uh, he says uh, it's been several weeks since we showed you the graphics for new high res circuit connectors. However, now is finally the time when we have them in the game. Uh, so it kind of just says he'll show us the changes. And then uh, down here it says, uh, I find 15 version of the Zerg connector module has some problems. Uh, the wire connectors are different from the combinators, which is true. Um, wires sometimes mm -hmm. completely overlap, making only one of them prob uh, properly visible, which is definitely an issue. Yep. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that one. Yeah. Yeah, same here. It's definitely a problem. Um, modularity, you can somewhat tell what is happening based on the LED states, but it could be much nicer. Yeah, I'd say that's probably true. Uh, mm -hmm. con connecting a bell always looks weird, while a yellow structure which holds a connector box could be made more specific. And uh, some of the rotations are utterly useless. <laughs> and then uh, the Lua definitions are spread over every single entity, so revisiting them all is a big pain. Uh, so first off, we have the wire connectors are different from combinators, so you can see that uh, on the, the left-hand picture here, that, you know, on the pump, the connector does look quite a bit different than the combinator side. Yep. Uh, and part how... of that is just the uh, the low res, I think. Yeah, that's like, part of it. It's difficult to see that you have, like, minerals on there. Yeah, that is true. This is, uh, yeah, this is the low res version for sure. Um, but then on the right side, uh, this is the high res version and uh, it does look uh more similar it does have those like the little red knob and green knob then to kind of correspond with the combinator ones mm -hmm. which is quite nice uh you know i can visually tell a difference for sure yeah i especially love that they're not uh parallel they're kind of sticking out at, weir at slightly different angles i yeah. think that just adds to the steampunk uh hodgepodge together kind of a, of a macgyvered feeling that factorio is Oh, definitely. Yeah, it it's a really nice addition. It's the little details. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so then moving down is wires sometimes completely overlap. And this is what we were talking about. So um, this entire picture here is showing what it's currently like in 15, where really the only place th this has both red and green wires, but you can't even notice there's a red wire except for like in these teeny little sections, like right yep. where it connects. Mm hmm. You can kind of notice it, but it's really, really difficult uh, to see that. And again, part of that might be low res. Uh, I mean, because a lot of these are the low res things, like the belt connectors and stuff look low res. Um, but anyway, we moved down, and he says, to prevent this from happening, I took a pixel grid and blender and tried to always have the connectors far away from each other to prevent this from happening. Same issue happens with combinators, but let's see if we uh, ever have time to change that. So now... Uh, he did change it, and it's a very slight difference, but it's enough to to actually see the the different the two different wires right. now. Yeah, and and I guess especially when you have a lot of items lined up like this, the the only time you you really need to worry about it is if you missed a connection in there somewhere. Right. So you would be able to see if there was a break in the red wire between some of those inserters now, rather than just not noticing it until you realize that something wasn't working later on. Yeah. Exactly. And. Uh... And again, it's it's very uh, visually now. You can notice like the little knobs, the little uh, like connector things that stick out, actually really add to it. Like on the inserters and stuff, it's now like mm -hmm. very clear where the wires are connecting. Yep. Uh, I especially how how it look like how it looks on the belts, mm -hmm. uh, with those wires kind of running over and and under the the little frame there, and on the gate, I think is really cool. Yeah, it looks really great. And I, yeah, like you said, I love the how the wires run like kind of over and under. They're just kind of all like just wrapped around here. Yep. Kind of again, just like the thrown together thing. Like, you know, screw this. We're just going to wrap wire around it, which I think is really <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, so the modularity, uh, the system of drawing has uh, slightly changed. Now when we con uh, connect an entity, you can clearly recognize what is what it is doing, what is its state. The rule is... Red green LED means write mode, generally stopping starting the entity. Blue LED means reading mode, generally reading uh, chest contents, reading signal colors, and so on. And uh, they just show here uh, it is actually fairly clear now um, which which is which. 
uh, which I think is is pretty cool. Yeah, I like what that they went with blue to kind of match the blue from the uh, um, <laughs> the the rail signals, the chain signals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now there's like a red, green, and blue consistency throughout it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he says, uh, even if or if you only connect to the logistics network, even the wire connection points are going to disappear, as you can see on the pump above. Which is also cool that that actually changes then when it's just connected to the logistics network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now you can tell whether an entity has been connected to the network and then they don't have to draw those extra little sprites on there. Yeah, exactly. That's nice. Um, you know, I, it does occur to me that like you and I are not exactly the best when it comes to these circuit things, and yet here we are talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're not very good at this. <laughs> Uh, but they look pretty, right? Yeah, they that's look all pretty. That yeah, that's that's cool. That's what's good, right? Um, so then the transport belts. Uh, there was, you know, he says we were using previously the universal connector on belts, and to support it, we made a special layer with a frame to hold it. This just uses another layer and generally looks rather weird. Uh, so this uh, again, this first picture is what it currently looks like now in fifteen, um, which does look a little odd. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, it... <laughs> I mean, you know, how else are you going to do a belt? Uh, the Ooh, first yeah. time I saw these in game, I was like, "Really?" But you know, how else are you going to do a belt, really? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I can't really think of much other way. Uh, yeah. So, Blaine said we found it better to just make specific uh, sprites for belts, which should integrate nicer and use layers, uh, less layers. Which uh, this is where the wires kind of wrap around, and this has the knobs too. Which I mean, it's still the frame things, but it does. It, it's more unique. Right, yeah, especially if you look at, like, um, the top two in the middle uh, on the bottom picture. See how you can still kind of see the arrows poking through? Uh, pre previously, the the frames just kind of took over that whole little section, right? But now it looks like the frames, there's actually a separation between the belt and the frame above it. So you can actually see that arrow going underneath it. So it, it looks, rather than being right on top of the belt, it actually looks like there's a, some space underneath it. It's a yeah. nice little detail. Yeah, definitely. It is actually. Now that you mention it, I didn't really notice, but now I do, and it is quite nice. Uh, and then now on to the rotation. So this essentially just shows um, that there's currently a lot of, uh, you know, there's 32 rotations of these, and that a lot of them are pretty useless, like the one that's uh, circled here in red. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so then he says, I put uh, the two things together and made it impossible to use rotations just be a flip version of the useful ones. Picture below is a mock-up. The actual sprite sheets have separate layers to allow the modularity mentioned above. So these are, you know, like you said, uh, just essentially flip versions of useful ones. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, definitely looks a bit better. Uh, and then the game doesn't actually use uh, all of the 32 rotations, but it's easier to have them all for future new entities. Importantly, also new entities added by mods, which is a good point. Yep, yep. Although um, I do kind of want to want to know what they're talking about future new entities. I wonder <laughs> if they have anything uh, they wanted to say, but they can't. <laughs> yeah, hinting at kind of. Um, so then the load definitions made each entity. Uh, this was a little beyond my scope, but um, essentially to get all the shifting values, we're using a very similar system what we described in Five Facts Two Hundred Two. Uh, special pictures from After Effects processed by Python scripts. The only real difference is that now After Effects uh, also has to import sprite sheets of our uh, existing entities and align them with the shifting values. Luckily, After Effects supports JavaScript based uh, expressions, which makes this uh, work simpler. Um, so he says, you know, this above just lets me center the sprite and copy the XY shifting values from Lua instead of having to worry about making calculations all the time, which is definitely nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, with shifting values ready, the next step is to tell the game to accept them somehow. I wouldn't dare to try to overwrite all the ent entries in the entities Lua and similar files, uh, simply because it would probably mean massive amount of errors. Uh, so instead, uh, Posila wrote a Python script which generates a new circuit connector file, uh, yeah, where all the specific definitions are kept and refactored, uh, refactored the entity so that each entity connectable to the circuit network just grabs the values from the master circuit file um so hopefully that kind of makes it easier for them to change and stuff in the future mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then yep. uh, this is going to see like like we're not going to notice anything for this. Like th right. this isn't going to translate into like UPS increase or anything like that. But uh, it should make new entity creation a lot a lot easier for yeah. them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so then this this is my actually my favorite part. Is... Oh no no, it's my favorite. <laughs> Everyone knows how much I like lamps. Oh yeah, this is your favorite. <laughs> You're probably like over the moon with this. <laughs> so more lamps. High resolution lamps. As one of the often used entities in Circuit Network, the lamp is getting a high resolution version. The graphics are a work in progress, so there will likely be some changes. I don't know, man. I think these look pretty damn good as they are. <laughs> they do. Although somebody on Reddit noticed that there's a six on every single one of these. What? Yeah, look on the six? look on the front face of like the ones that are turned off. You'll notice that there's a six on every single one of the lamps. Are you sure that's not just I thought that was just like a wire coil inside of it. Uh, it well, it might be. I mean, yeah, that's probably just what the wire coil looks like, but it, it is a six. It is indeed. And actually, looking closer, that's the part that lights up. Uh-huh. Like, yep. So, like, yeah, I'm sure it is like a tungsten filament or something like that in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. I just zoomed in like 200%, but that... uh. I, no, it is a wire inside the thing, but yeah, it does coincidentally all look like six. Mm-hmm. Even so, though, these things look fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really like the look of them. I especially like that there's a bit more definition between the housing and the actual filament inside. Because previously, yeah. they just all kind of lit up, and now there's like a, def a more of a definition between the two. Yeah, that's the first thing I actually noticed, and you can really tell on the just the white ones. Mm-hmm. Where, yeah, like you said, where now it's just kind of like just the whole entire thing is illuminated and yep. you can't really tell. Um, so, yeah, this is really nice. And also in combination with like the high-res combinators, it just looks so nice. Oh, yeah. Stuff that we'll never use. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, Except we, the lamps. Yeah, we'll I'll use, use the, the lamps. lamps. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as always, let us know what you think. Uh, it's so, you, you if... Uh, you guys watching the video and stuff have thoughts leave them on the forum or the uh reddit discussion area as well is usually good for the friday facts but that pretty much concludes it some really awesome new graphics uh, if you use a circuit network and stuff these will be fantastic for you and uh well for s people like us i guess they'll, they'll be great to look at when we go into a factory where someone's already used them <laughs> yep it'll look much better on screen yeah <laughs> pretty much so uh, i think that's gonna do it you have any last thoughts nope just excited for all the new artwork yeah me too it's gonna be so fantastic uh but anyway that's gonna do it guys as always leave your thoughts down below really interested in what you all had to say and uh hope you enjoyed but until next time we will see you later bye <laughs>